I acknowledged that I was gay. I accepted it. This is about my son, and he needs his mother. Loneliness has an answer. God is the love and the grace we need. God really is in the everyday. You know what? I'm gay, but I love my church. I want to live that abundant life that you talk about. This is Brian. And this is Justin. Welcome to another edition of GCN GCN Radio. Radio. It's good to be with you for another GCN Radio. So... Let's talk about our guests. Exactly. Uh, We're going to get to hear some music today. I'm very excited. Um, Doing these music shows has been one of my treats um, as as far as doing this show because, you know, we get to hear a little bit about our guest and hear a little of her music. She has been called the mother of contemporary Christian music, um, and now she has her own music ministry born again lesbian music balm ministries her name is marcia stevens pino marcia how are you doing good it's it's great to have you now the mother of contemporary christian music that that's really quite a statement and a testament to to the work that you've done where does your story begin and let us get to know you a little bit well the the comment, I always say it was better than being called the grandmother. Um, <laughs> 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 the comment came um, from a book called The Encyclopedia of Contemporary Christian Music, which has like maybe 2,500 entries of people in all genres and all spectrum of contemporary Christian music. So to be called it in that book was sort of extraordinary. And um, it was written by a guy who wrote an article in Christian Century about me and called me conservative Christianity's worst nightmare, a uh, Bible-believing, God-loving, God, wait, Bible-believing, God-fearing, Jesus-loving lesbian Christian. So, <laughs> <laughs> he got a lot of static for writing that in the first place, I think. People think I made it up, <laughs> which is sort of embarrassing. Yeah, I just put that on my website. But you started um, out in, in contemporary Christian music, in, in, in mainstream contemporary Christian music. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I started out in Christian music before it was called contemporary Christian music. They didn't know what to do with us. We were a bunch of hippies in 1969. Okay, thank you. Everybody can laugh now. And, um, you know, I started writing music that was sort of like the music that we did then, sort of folk, you know, street music kind of thing. And um, nobody knew what to do with it. The mainstream Southern Gospel wouldn't have anything to do with it at the time. Um, the mainstream churches wanted hymns. They didn't want us. They, at the time, it was a big deal to have a guitar in church. Now you can't even go to a church that doesn't have a guitar in it. But <laughs> at the time, that was a huge issue. And so they didn't know what to do with us at first. And we sort of started this new genre that they called contemporary Christian music. So it was sort of, it was weird to be the first group and at the time get a lot of notoriety and traveled and toured and did TV shows and toured Europe and opened for Billy Graham at the first Jerusalem Conference on Biblical Prophecy and opened for all the big, you know, Pat Robertson and Oral Roberts and Anita Bryant. Um, (laughs) I didn't know any better. It was 1978. Um, (laughs) I think it was 76 or 78. And I didn't, I don't know, she was the Orange Juice Lady. I didn't know they booked us, you know. So at the time we got a lot of notoriety. Of course, after I came out, they sort of wrote us right out of the history books until this encyclopedia of contemporary Christian music came out. So that was sort of an interesting uh, addition to the world. Wow. So you had a big hit, uh, For Those Tears I Died. Can you tell us a little bit about that song, and and then um, maybe we can listen to some of it? When I um, first became a Christian, I... I just couldn't figure out how to talk to people about it. Everybody was real sick of religion. We were all hippies. We it, Back then, you didn't do dope to get tie. You did dope to expand your mind. And so <laughs> everybody was <laughs> wow. you know, to deep discussions <laughs> about religion. And so when I wanted to all of a sudden talk about Jesus, people were entirely put off. And I finally thought, well, maybe if I could put it in a song, it would be cool, and they could at least kind of hear what I'm trying to say before they stop to just tell me, that they didn't want to hear anymore, you know. I'd never written a song before. I'd written a lot of poetry and, you know, came from a kind of a family background of a lot of poetry. My grandpa knew whole books of poetry, all of Shakespeare's sonnets that he would quote to me and stuff. But I'd never written a song, so 
I uh, listened to a Peter, Paul, and Mary song and figured out how many lines it had in it because I wasn't sure if a song had to have a certain number of lines in it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wrote a poem with that many lines in it and um, had new four chords on the guitar. If those of you who are musicians will note that all four actually made it into the song. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> wrote it so that I could at least talk to my sis- my kid's sister and my friends about what had happened to me. I mean, for me, my life had changed in, in a moment, and uh, and I really wanted to be able to talk to people about it without sounding like I was judgmental or preaching or had an agenda for their lives. So I wrote the song, and I had a high school choir director who made it my senior class project to get it copyrighted, which I thought was extremely silly and pretentious, but he made me do it, so <laughs> that's how it got copyrighted. You said you'd come and share all my sorrows You said you'd be there for all my tomorrows I came so close to sending you away But just like you promised, you came all the time 
And as everybody here I know will testify, in the two years that I've been a Christian, the Lord just picked us up and ripped off with us. And we just got back from a trip all over the world where the Lord just took us. And we got to tell so many people about his love and all the things that he has to share. You know, people all over the world are hungry just like we are in America. And it was so so great to know that, that the Christian life is so exciting and so well planned by somebody far greater than we are. Oh, 